The team at FSI, Food Safety Investigation, is once again on the case. What happened here? Was it a double homicide? No weapons. No wounds. Were they poisoned? Was it a food fight gone bad? The FSI team checks for clues. I found a trail. Looks like they made a lot of trips back and forth. To where? The bathroom. You know what that means. Body fluids. It could be... Food poisoning. If it is foodborne illness, these diners aren't alone. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control reveal that each year as many as 76 million Americans get sick from contaminated food. 50% of those Americans get sick because of improper hygiene and mishandling foods in their homes. Those are some nasty facts about sickness and disease. And we have a nasty job. But our investigations could help more people handle food safely. And save lives. The medical team is on the way where I'm pretty sure you're going to live. A foodborne illness creates microbes or bacteria that settle in the digestive tract. The most common types of dangerous bacteria are salmonella. It spreads through meat, poultry, eggs, or milk products. E. coli. It is found in ground beef, chicken, and unpasteurized milk. Staphylococcus, or staph. It spreads in meat, cream-filled baked goods, poultry, eggs, potato salad, and sandwich fillings. Foodborne illness may feel like the flu. I know, I've had it. The symptoms are a lot alike. Nausea, fever, vomiting, diarrhea, and cramps. We have to solve this food safety crime, but the victims are too sick to talk. We'll retrace their steps. We'll analyze the food clues, and we'll figure out which food safety rules they ignored. Let's take a look at the chart. Did the victims clean, separate, cook, and chill? The FSI team knows that when it comes to food safety, you can't be too careful. So they check in with the clean, separate, cook, and chill lab support team for a review. Let's video uplink with FSA headquarters for confirmation. Cooper here, glad to help. Make sure the scene is clean. That's the first food safety rule. Almost half of all foodborne illness could be eliminated if people would just wash their hands around food. Wash your hands with hot soapy water and really scrub for 20 seconds and sing the ABC song. I just sing happy birthday twice. Do you think it's your birthday or something? Hey, pay attention please. Next, wash the counters or any surface where you prepare food. That goes for utensils and cutting boards as well. Wash them with hot water and soap, or run them through the dishwasher. Also, make sure your clothing is clean. Next, clean the food. Wash and scrub fruits and vegetables under cold running water. Cleanliness helps prevent foodborne illness. Cleanliness reduces risks so keep food, utensils, clothing, and hands clean. I'll put Solowitz on the line to explain the second food safety rule, separate. I'll give you a quick review about how and why we separate food. Bacteria that causes food illness can spread quickly from raw meat to vegetables, fruit, bread, or any other food products. When making foods with chicken and beef, separate raw and cooked foods. When grilling, use a different plate after the meat is cooked. Otherwise, it could be... Wow, you are dramatic. Well, this is serious business. While grocery shopping, keep food separate. After shopping, put the groceries away immediately. In the refrigerator, put meats into separate drawers so that raw juices don't drip onto other foods. Check those expiration dates to keep your food fresh. And if you use a cutting board or plate to prepare meat, don't use it for anything else until it is washed again. Cross-contamination 
could have made your victim sick. Thanks for the refresher. What you have on cooking? Hey, Cooper, the FSI team needs you again. They need to know about safe cooking. We're going to turn up the heat with food safety rule number three. Cook. Heat foods to a high enough temperature, and you'll kill the bacteria that can cause a food illness. How hot is hot? Really hot. A meat thermometer could give you a correct, accurate temperature. Beef roasts are done at 145 degrees, poultry at 180 degrees. So use a meat thermometer. And if you don't have a meat thermometer, check the color. If it's pink, you could sink. So cook the food some more. If you're a microwave cook, rotate the dish or stir the food and cook all the way through. You want fish to be a solid color and flake when you touch it with a fork. You may want to drink raw eggs for nutrients, but only if they're pasteurized. Cook egg whites and yolks until they're firm. If you can't resist eating cookie dough, make it with pasteurized raw eggs. But really, baked chocolate chip cookies are the best. Now back to Solowitz for chilling news. Now let's chill out and talk about keeping cold foods cold and hot foods hot. You've heard that you need to heat foods to above 140 degrees to kill bacteria. Well, take away 100 degrees and chill foods to 40 degrees, or colder, to also be safe. Cold temperatures help prevent food bacteria from growing. Put mayonnaise or dairy products in the refrigerator or cooler as soon as possible after shopping or eating. Refrigerate perishable foods right away, or at least within two hours for the best margin of safety. If you have a lot of food to cool, place it in smaller containers for faster chilling. If you need to leave foods out, like at a party, make sure they're placed in ice or in a cooler. Microbes multiply in food with warmth, time, and moisture. When you have food to thaw and defrost, Switch it from the freezer to the refrigerator the day before, instead of thawing it on a countertop all day. Thawing in the microwave is a faster and also safer defrosting option. Be safe, so it won't get into that 40 to 140 danger zone. We hope we helped you find out what happened to the victims. We can hear their groans over the phone right now. Too bad, being sick is lousy. Thanks for the refresher. Glad to help. Good luck. Report back to us on the findings. Armed with protective gloves, swabs, and a black light, the FSI interns look for clues in the kitchen, the likely scene of the food safety crime. There was definitely food prep in here. This place is a mess. And we're in luck. The security camera was on, so maybe there'll be some clues as to why they're so sick. Looks like they brought groceries home and left to work out without putting them away. Let's fast forward. They're back, three hours later. Look, she's smelling the pizza to see if it's okay to eat. Stop the tape! People think that if food smells and looks okay, it's good to eat. Wrong! They should have pitched the perishable food. Can I turn the video back on? Sure. This tape is a bonanza of clues, all pointing to foodborne illness. Now she's eating potato salad out of the container. Hey, that's been sitting out for three hours! Bet it won't stay in her stomach three hours. Look, she's cutting up unwashed vegetables and on the same cutting board as the hamburger without washing the cutting board. Speaking of washing, look at all those dishes in the sink. And now she's sitting on the counter with her cat. Counters are for prepping, not for sitting. This is painful to wash. Nobody wash your hands before prepping the food. I know, but let's see what other health hazards they created. Are you brave enough to look in the refrigerator? The 
FSI team approaches the refrigerator. They check the temperature. It's 44 degrees. They don't have to dig too deep to find other food safety violations. An open can shouldn't go back in the refrigerator. Put it in a plastic container. The milk is already two weeks past the sell-by date. Many food packages also show expiration dates. The hamburger juice is dripping on the carrots. Oh, food safety investigation can be disgusting and this refrigerator mm. proves it. When the victims recover, they're gonna have to spend a weekend scrubbing this out with warm, soapy water. Let's take another look at the tape. And she's coughing, blowing her nose, and sneezing near the food. Disgusting. She's licking her fingers. Now they're drinking from the milk carton. Think of the backwash. They're wiping up the floor with a dishcloth. Let's fast forward. I want to see what happened to the hamburger they cooked. It was already contaminated, but I have a hunch they made it worse. Oh dear. They didn't use a food thermometer to be sure it's cooked completely. What a mess. And what we have here is a feast that is certain to send anyone to the emergency room. Now they are sick. Very sick. This was definitely foodborne illness, but we can't solve this mystery by ourselves. There are too many sources of contamination. We'll have to send some samples off to the food investigation team to analyze. Victims murdered every food safety rule and made themselves sick. It was a self-inflicted sickness. They didn't clean their hands, the utensils, or the food. If they had washed their hands in hot soapy water long enough to sing the ABC song, it would have been a good start. Next, they should have cleaned the counters, cutting board, and all the utensils. And the vegetables should have been washed and scrubbed under running water. The next food safety rule they murdered was separate. The food preparation was downright frightening. The separate lab expert could have saved them a lot of distress. Salowitz said to keep raw meat and poultry away from other food products, even in the grocery cart and in the refrigerator. During preparation, separate meats and poultry to make sure no raw juices contaminate vegetables or other foods. Use different cutting boards and plates. The cooking procedures were totally unsafe. They didn't fry the hamburger long enough. They needed Cooper's advice. He said to use a meat thermometer to make sure their meat and poultry reached recommended temperatures. Check for cold spots in microwave food and continue cooking. Our sickly diners needed to chill out. All their food, that is. They left groceries out for nearly three hours. Had they met up with the chill intern, they would have known that refrigeration stunts the growth of harmful food bacteria. Perishable food should never be left unrefrigerated for more than two hours. The temperature in a refrigerator should be set at 40 degrees or lower. Food should be thawed in the refrigerator or microwave rather than on the kitchen counter. The lab will really have their work cut out for them with all this evidence. Looks like the ambulance has arrived to take away our poor misguided victims. They'll survive. They'll feel better in a few days. I'm glad to hear that. I guess you can't send people to jail for murdering food safety procedures. But I am sentencing them to learn food safety rules. But let's leave it to them as a get well card. Sounds like a plan.